Excellent. Welcome to day one of the Innovation and Equitable Development Teams, Green Business Engagement and Networking Support, or Green Beans. This month, we're going to be talking through many different elements of running a green business in the district. And we're so excited to have you with us today. If you are here live, please do put your introduction in the chat. And if you're watching this later, uh, welcome as well. So today we are going to talk a little bit about why we're here um, having this green bean session. Uh, what is a social enterprise? What is a green business? The benefits of a green business, how to identify as a green business in the district and where um, uh, and anywhere as well. And then a few resources to get you on your way. And again, this is the first of five in this month of June. So we're here this month because June 5th in just a few days is World Environment Day. And certainly as a, as a city in DC, the Sustainable DC 2.0 plan gives us some real clear targets and goals for the district sustainability, um, meaning not just our environmental conditions of matching with those global needs of climate change, ocean ecosystems, biodiversity, but also the local economic and social inequities of our city and water, air, and soil quality in our city affecting so many. So the focus on sustainability ties with our focus on building a local economy and small businesses that are focused on sustainability. So in addition to lowering the emissions by buying local, um, it also can develop community engagement, really build our local economy to wealth build in a more equitable fashion throughout the city and build resilient decentralized operations in the face of increasing climate change and that sustainability can increase the viability, the margins, and the impact of small businesses. And that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. So there are two terms that we are going to be discussing throughout the month, and they are related but slightly different. So first, a social enterprise. A social enterprise combines economic, environmental, and social impact, pulling from traditional nonprofits and for-profit models. So um, looking at the bottom left, a nonprofit often is just looking at social returns, uh, at human or environmental impact, whereas a corporation traditionally has been focused on financial returns. But a social enterprise is really looking at blending those values of looking at economic, environmental, and social, um, also referred to as the triple bottom line, not just looking at the financial bottom line of your business, but the, the environmental and social as well. So a social enterprise is um, distinct from what we mean when, um, although also overlapping with the idea of a green business. A green business, a company that is seeking financial benefit like companies to employ their staff, to be able to see financial growth, grow their business, and also seeks to make a positive impact on the environment, the community, or the economy um, and and or the economy. So best practices for sustainability in terms of environmental sustainability. We'll talk a lot more about that today. Um, economic sustainability, that financial model that has long term productivity and social responsibility and social enterprise. Again, you'll hear in in the city and in the nation, in the world, a lot of overlap between social enterprise and green business. Social enterprise often looks particularly at that social impact, a green business, often more at that environmental impact. But often if we're really looking at this triple bottom line of seeing environmental, social, and economic benefit. So in the district, um, DSLBD and our partners at the Department of Energy and Environment are looking at defining a green business from two perspectives. One, the green product or service where the business is built around providing a product or service that benefits the environment. So that could be a waste management company that is sorting and recycling waste or a renewable energy company that's building and installing solar panels. We'll talk through a lot more local examples in a moment or where they're improving their processes to be more sustainable. So a hair salon that's using organic dyes and styling product, um, is really shifting its process to be more sustainable, lower its negative environmental impact and increase its positive environmental impact. Um, 
and looking at a clothing manufacturer that's looking at using organic raw materials. So changing their process of their inputs and their outputs. So starting when we're taking these two potential, these two definitions, again, looking at a green product or service where the business model is really built around that and a green process where you're really looking at greening your operations. Um, and in our next two sessions, we'll be digging into how you as an entrepreneur or a technical assistance service provider can be helping businesses green their process, green their operations, or build a business model that is really providing green products or services. So um, I'm going to fly through some examples of businesses that have won the District Sustainability Awards that comes out of the Department of Energy and Environment that awards businesses and nonprofits and, and individuals uh, a, an award celebrating their work to support the Sustainable DC 2.0 plan, which you can find at sustainable.dc.gov. Um, and then also highlighting some of our Made in DC businesses, which is a program through the um, Department of Small and Local Business Development, uh, and our Made in DC businesses that, again, are offering green products or services. So to paint this landscape here in the district. Mass Hall, um, which is a kitchen incubator located in Ward 5, um, which enabled the creation of 23 businesses, the growth of 13. By the time they won the Sustainability Awards in 2016, 80% of their businesses are owned by minorities or women, and or women. Um, and they increase access to healthy local food in what was and is a food desert or a food apartheid area. And they also really focus on sustainability in their building. So again, they're operating a green, um, they're operating this process um, and really trying to improve the sustainability of their process by um, using refurbished local recycled materials to build their building and really improving their operation through, uh, through energy water saving practices, recycling and composting. A City Possum's Mighty Program, also a district sustainability award winner. Uh, that empowers high school students to grow their own food and sell value added products at farmers markets throughout the district. Um, so as these are coming, feel free to put your own examples in the chat and feel free to share how you think these are offering um, uh, solutions in terms of green products and services and how you see them greening their operations. Any of those thoughts are welcome in the chat as we as we go through. And yes, thank you, Mary Lynn, who runs the Sustainability Awards program that over new businesses in the district have won thus far. Um, so thank you. We won't be highlighting all of them today, just a few. Um, the Farmers Restaurant Group that is focused on sourcing family farmed products and adding value, um, both through their cocktails and their dishes. And, and again, um, really thinking about how their food can be both um, family farms supporting that social impact, but also sustainably farmed. Native Rootscaping, a made in DC business that maintains landscapes uh, that are sustainable and beneficial to the environment, working with river smart homes. Um, so again, really offering that green product or service of the landscaping. Love and Carrots, edible landscaping for indoor and outdoor locations. Urban Farm Plans, which provides DIY kits um, and to, to build your own compost system, to build your own raised beds. And they also provide, uh, provide build and grow services uh, that are for compost and edible gardens. Claire Branchieu is a youth-led entrepreneur in the uh, company in the district uh, that make vegan, phthalate-free, naturally scented candles, but they also use their profits towards supporting folks who are experiencing homelessness in the district and developed a container take back program that rewards recycling. So again, trying to highlight with some of these examples ways that businesses are lifting up the um, social impact of their business and of their revenue stream while also trying to green their operations. So thinking about those different pieces operating within green businesses. DeFerro Date Spread, um, which is a plant-based spread um, that has just dates and in some cases cacao in their spread um, and the um, and and every jar funds employment and upscaling for women um, who are facing adversity or experiencing homelessness. 
Three Part Harmony Farm, um, a made in DC business that's also locally grown, really thinking about growing food locally, addressing food access, and uh, as well as um, sustainable farming here in the district. Little Acre Flowers, which is sourcing flowers locally and providing bouquets of seasonal flowers that are tied, hand tied in upcycled coffee sacks that would otherwise be thrown away. Are folks seeing, I'm um, seeing some things come in through the chat. Are you seeing some patterns here in terms of really thinking about greening your operation and greening your business model? Locally sourced um, and produced hot sauces to made in DC businesses, She Peppers and Soilful Cities, Pippin Sauce, Pippin Sauce sources from local farms throughout the district, helping them grow uh, their farms and their seedlings and guaranteeing a market for the peppers grown in order to make these hot sauces. Um, Just AJ's, which is a plant-based um, hot dog alternative, making vegan hot dogs. So really thinking about how to make um, plant-based food more appealing. Two of our local DC honey companies, um, which are again, supporting pollinators and the sustainability of our ecosystems here in the district, but also selling their honey, um, and in, in the case of DCB, also looking at supporting and training new beekeepers. Oh, sorry about the quality of this photo, Glen's Garden Market, um, which sources locally, again, creating that economic empowerment that we're looking for in a social enterprise, but also looking at sourcing um, sust from sustainable farms and looking at buying and sourcing locally. So they source products from only within the Chesapeake Bay watershed. So anywhere that was in that watershed of Maryland, um, Maryland, parts of Pennsylvania, Virginia, and of course the district. And bicycle trash, which sources um, materials from um, old bicycles, whether that's gears, whether that's chains, or whether that's tires that can no longer be used anymore, making belts, wallets. Um, oh, an excellent question, Nathan. I saw your question. Were there any CBEs that use electric or hybrid cars who has won um, the sustainability award? Great question. Um, I, as to my knowledge, there have not been transportation companies yet winning the sustainability awards. And just to clarify, the businesses that we're highlighting, not all of them have won the sustainability awards. Many of the last set, first three are sustainability award winners. Um, the last set are made in DC businesses. So um, even though the applications for the awards come out in March, you can register today if you have a valid business license um, uh, to register as a made in DC business. Um, and you can flag both on made in DC and in the business toolkit, you can flag uh, that you are a green business and we'll be talking more in the sessions to come about really how to build your business as a green business. Thank you. Link for business toolkit in the chat, dcbusinesstoolkit.com. Uh, Great. So um, little wild things. Um, again, growing here in the district hydroponically, uh, working on increasing food access and also creating um, creating local goods sustainably. Um, great, another great question around is made in DC just for products or also for services? Um, it, it does focus on products that are made in the district or designs that are made in the district. So these have been some examples of our local businesses, um, many of which, as you'll see, have been trying to weave together both offering a green product or service and greening their operations. So let's dig a little bit more into, regardless of what type of business you're running, and again, this will be in future sessions that we'll dig more into detail uh, than today's just intro, but in a, um, when we're thinking about greening our operations of any kind of business, regardless of whether you are um, starting your business with the goal of solving environmental challenges and local community challenges, or no matter what type of business you're running, you can be thinking about greening your operations. So some key things to be thinking about in that, recycling and waste reduction. Um, so recognizing the need to reduce 
you can uh, reuse materials that can be reused, recycle what is recyclable, and then separate waste and dispose in a suitable way. If you're working in the food industry, that could involve composting. I'm thinking about reducing your food waste, reusing scraps of food, whether that's carrot tops or peels that can actually be used in food, and then composting what might be left. Energy and water conservation. Of course, this is a huge part of what DOEE and DCSEU can offer you in terms of resources to save heat and electricity, save water, um, and source from renewable resources. And pollution prevention, and again, in future sessions, we'll dig into the regulations that exist, as well as the ways that you can um, uh, dig into using low emission equipment, operating efficiently, and using biodegradable or compostable materials. Thanks for the great links coming in in the chat um, in terms of DCSEU. And yes, Mary Lynn, indeed, um, DOEE recommends return, reject, and redesign to address waste in your waste stream. And we will think we'll dig more into that, how from the very design of your products, um, you can really be digging into um, rejecting what will be discarded or redesigning um, your products. Also then thinking about green procurement. So where you're buying your products, where you're sourcing your materials can make a huge difference in your business. Um, looking at local materials and products and choosing environmentally friendly suppliers. Green distribution, when you're distributing your products, Whatever kind of product or service you're offering, thinking about that sustainable method of transport, like Nathan was flagging, so much of a business impact can actually be in the transportation of your products. So thinking about green distribution, there are companies that make sure that all of their delivery is by bicycle, or in the case of Compost Cab, making sure that they are exclusively using hybrid or electric vehicles to be collecting their compost. So really thinking about that. Um, the distribution of their products and services. And then decent work, providing fair, a fair living wage, security in the workplace, social protection, the opportunity to be truly expressing your opinion in the workplace and outside of the workplace, and equality of opportunity and treatment. Um, there's so many different parts of this, and again, we'll spend an entire half hour digging into um, the, the, the processes. Um, excellent, there's some great ideas coming in in the chat. Um, yeah, you can really think about um, when we talked about greening your operations or greening your, your, your processes in your business, um, that you can also be thinking about recycling and waste reduction, not just in your business's operations, but in the entire life of your product or services. Um, so you can really think about um, the ways that you are reducing the amount of waste that your product would generate in the future. So some examples of the real impact that can happen from greening your operations. The Environmental Defense Fund runs a program called Climate Corps, uh, where summer interns intern at organizations of all different types and sizes to look at how to green their operations. And on average, again, some of these are quite big companies, they found on average a million dollars of savings per year per organization. Um, and uh, looking at opportunities for cost reduction. So if you are operating your business in a building, this is a real opportunity for you to look at real savings in your operational costs of covering those utilities that you can um, and a process through a process of continuous improvement, making sure that you are continuously looking at how you can be improving um, by engaging, perhaps you on this call are the company's executive, um, but really looking at how you can access capital through um, grants from the city, through even attending our capital sessions to look at Kiva loans can be a great way to cover the cost of energy efficiency upgrades. There's also district capital to access that capital. Make sure you're capturing the data and then sharing those results so you can invest in the next of your, um, your process improvements. And again, all of these can apply not just to product or manufacturing companies, but to service companies. And there is a question 
how as a service company can you make sure that you are going green? And I think that all of these could really apply um, to service companies as well, whether that's thinking about the workplace you're creating, what, what materials you're procuring. It can be as simple as your computer paper or ink to your utilities, to um, whatever suppliers are, are supplying, supplying for your services. In event designers and making sure that event planners, a service industry, can be a huge opportunity to not only green their operations, but again, green the process of the service that they're providing. And why might you want to invest in all of that, you might ask? Well, partly operational savings, direct savings on utilities if you're reducing energies, um, if you're reducing your energy, um, you're saving money on those gas and electricity bills, saving on those water bills. Reducing your input costs, if you're reducing how much you're using, you are going to be spending less on those inputs. And there are real synergies between these reductions. So if you are making your water system more efficient, you'll see those reductions in energy needed to heat that water. Um, if you're in the food business or caterer, um, the when you're being more creative and wasting less food, you'll also be consuming less energy to refrigerate, transport, everything like that. So really looking at those synergies be between the reductions. Um, and yes, a question of, is there a listing of green businesses? Um, because we do have a green event planner on the line. So important. Thanks, Suzanne, for being here. Um, well, certainly put your link in the chat to share with the other folks on this call. And again, if you haven't yet introduced yourself in the chat, please do. This is also an opportunity for learning and networking. Um, and you can register on the DC Business Toolkit and flag yourself as a green business. Um, and you can also make sure to apply next year for the District Sustainability Awards, um, which is another incredible list of, of sustainable businesses in the district. If you are making a, a product or offering, um, you can register at um, Made in DC again as well. So benefits of a green business. We're going to spend our last five minutes digging into this. Um, certainly access to markets. All of us know that there's an increasing demand for eco-friendly products, whether that's coming from health reasons, financial reasons, or environmental passion. Um, we talked about those cost savings. Access to support. There's uh, increasing techni technical and financial support for green businesses, and uh, this event being just one of them, but you can also sign up, as has come through in the chat, for technical assistance with myself or the rest of the team from the Innovation and Equitable Development and from DOEE's um, Urban Sustainability Administration, where Mary Lynn also offers direct technical assistance for businesses that are looking to green their operations. Higher productivity. If you have a healthier, happier workforce, you're going to see higher productivity and, of course, a healthier environment. Um, there's a lot of research around the fact that employees who are engaged in sustainability initiatives have statistically significant um, increases in their overall engagement in the company, in company activities. And so really thinking if you are running a business that is employing other people, how can your employees feel more engaged, feel more connected to your business? One way is by really engaging in these sustainability activities. and. Um, as in, in uh, as we look at employing the next generations of young folks coming in to potentially work in your businesses, having an environmental or social mission is also shown to get more of those applications from your most competitive client uh, potential employees. Real benefits for your brand value. Um, Nielsen corporate social responsibility study showed that three and four millennials are willing to pay more for a product or service from a company that is committed to environmental and social impact. So three and four millennials, that growing population cohort, 51% of baby boomers. So it's not just young folks. It's also the majority of baby boomers who are willing to pay more for a product or service from a company committed to environmental and social impact. Um, Environmental sustainability uh, in a Unilever study of um, 20,000 people across five countries, including the US market, 21% um, said they would actively seek out brands. They would choose a brand. If all things were equal, they would actively choose the brand um, that had more clear sustainability credentials. 
So whether that is a certification or those are the ways that you're building your business, that you're plant-based in the case of our local company, Bright Greens, or you are delivering on bicycles or you're en renewable energy powered, make those credentials clear on your marketing. Companies with sustainability built into their product and purpose are growing 30% faster than those that don't, even in a challenging economy. And we know that local cares even, carries an even higher value to consumers than even organic or GMO free, with that's again in the food context, but emphasizing the fact that you are a local business is tied to your sustainability as well. Not, not only because again of the carbon emissions of uh, moving products from across the country or around the world, but even in services, a local business is adding more to our local economy than businesses that are national or multinational. So emphasizing the fact that you are a local DC business. Again, you can register as a made in DC business to do that, um, but there are other ways that you can in your own brand communications, communicate the fact that you are sustainable, that you are local, and what the other, whatever the other elements of your greening of your process and your operations, make that clear to your customers. The ways that you can identify as a green business. Um, there are green business certifications, um, whether that is for larger businesses, the ISO 40001, 40, um, the Green Wrench Program here in the district, again, that Mary Lynn, who's on the line, uh, coordinates for uh, vehicle, for um, uh, car uh, repair and maintenance locations, the Green Restaurant Association, um, which certifies green restaurants and the food recovery network, which certifies food donation. Um, and excellent. Thanks for sharing that um, resource. Should I get a green certification for my business? Um, there's some great questions on whether or not this is the right choice for you because you can identify as a green business in your own materials. Really important. Um, customers and clients are aware of the increasing greenwashing, businesses calling themselves green when there's actually nothing sustainable about their operations. So the more that you can communicate what it is that you are actually doing, the more that you will prevent greenwashing, um, but also that you will be able to make clear to your customers what are the ways that you are, um, the, the ways that you are taking action. And again, those resources you can find in the business toolkit um, at dcbusinesstoolkit.com, more resources here in the chat. Um, and um, as Mary Lynn mentioned, depending on your type of business, there are many different certifications. So we've just shared a few, um, but there are many different certifications based on your type of business, the product or service that you're offering. And um, as Mary Lynn said in the chat, DOEE can point you to third party green certification programs that have a good reputation. These can be expensive. So thinking about whether or not a certification is essential to reach your clients or to get the contracts that you're looking for, or whether you can, um, whether by communicating your green credentials, that is enough for your customers. Um, so a few resources, and again, there will be more. We hope you'll join us for the um, coming sessions in the coming weeks. You will, everyone who registered will receive this presentation with these live links, but the Small B Business Administration has many resources um, that you can um, around starting a green business or greening your operations and business processes. Um, and DOEE has many resources for businesses, both in terms of um, thinking through the process as well as financially. Um, so as we come to time today, a reminder that we have four more sessions in this um, in this series. Next week, we'll dig into greening your operations. On June 16th, developing a green business model. On the 23rd, social entrepreneurship. And then on June 30th, measuring and monetizing your impact. So how to make sure you're tracking that and finding the right folks who can pay you for the, the um, for that. Of course, you can also find um, support through one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, both through the Innovation and Equitable Development Team at DSLBD, 
um, you can reach us at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Inno underscore booking, all caps Inno underscore booking, um, and as well as um, reaching out to DOEE, who we will hear more from in the weeks to come. Thank you for joining us for this intro to our green business engagement and networking support. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have all of you. And again, as Kate put in the chat, we know that DC entrepreneurs are community leaders helping us reach our sustainable DC 2.0 goals. So thank you for all that you do and your interest today. Have a wonderful rest of the day and we will stop the recording and I'll stick around for another few minutes for questions.